Returning home, I found a note on the door. Dear neighbor, we understand you are newlyweds and full of energy, but please consider others. The constant nose until midnight has severely disrupted our routine. I was stunned upon reading this note. I've been on a business trip for the past half month, leaving my wife alone at home. The note was signed by 1501, the apartment below mine. I held the note for a long time, unable to process it. It must be a prank. I tried to comfort myself with this thought. But once I stepped inside, it was another blow. The house was a mess. Snacks and takeout were strewn all over the dining table and coffee table, and around 10 beer bottles were scattered on the floor. How could my wife drink beer alone at home? My head buzzed. I still couldn't believe it. Until I went into the bathroom when found, my razor moved and the men's shampoo I had used only once was significantly less. A rush of blood surged to my head in an instant, and my wife messaged me on WeChat. What time is your flight tomorrow afternoon? I clutched my phone for a long time before I restrained myself from telling her that I had actually come home early. Honey, my flight is at 5 in the afternoon, so I'll probably get home by 8. Okay, got it. No extra concern or advice to stay safe on the way back, just a clear focus on my return time. In the past, I might not have noticed these details, but now, with seeds of doubt planted in my heart, everything seemed off. I grabbed my suitcase and left the house. I checked into a hotel near our community, left my luggage there, and then took a taxi straight to my wife's office. My wife works as an administrator at a small company. To pay isn't high, but the job is easy. Her daily routine mainly involves gossiping and drinking tea with colleagues, followed by shopping, beauty treatments, and manicures after work. Seeing it was only for a clock, I found a cafe to sit in while I waited. During the wait, I started scrolling through her social media. Most of her posts were selfies of dining and drinking out, nothing special. Then I checked her Xiaohanshu a Chinese social media app. As I slowly scrolled down, I noticed the content was similar to her social media posts. However, I keenly noticed something off. My wife has always preferred a quiet and elegant style, but about three months ago, she started occasionally posting photos in a hip-hop style. Colorful braids, baggy clothes, cool poses. I clicked on one of the photos. The caption was, does this look good? It seemed like she was asking someone specifically. There were many likes and comments, and I scrutinized each one. One user with a floral tattoo commented, wow, stunning. I clicked into his profile and noticed that he also lived in Xi'an. The alarm on my phone rang. It was almost five o'clock. Afraid of missing my wife, I put away my phone and focused on the building across the street. Shortly, my wife, wearing a dress, gracefully exited the building. She went straight to the curb and got into a taxi heading in the opposite direction of our home. Luckily, there were many empty cabs during rush hour. I quickly got into one and asked the driver to follow her. At this hour, traffic was smooth. The taxi drove for over 20 minutes before stopping on a street in the southern part of the city. Lined with motorcycle shops, my wife got out of the car and entered the nearest shop, called Towsy's Second-Hand Motorcycles. I got out to and hid behind an SUV in a parking lot across the street to secretly observe. Inside the shop, a man was lounging on a sofa, playing on his phone, with her back to me. My wife, wearing high heels, walked up to him. They exchanged a few words, and then the man grabbed her, and she sat directly on his lat, his hand slid under her skirt, and she didn't resist, instead leaning into his arms even more coquettishly. This intimate behavior clearly wasn't the first time. My vision went black, and my whole body felt numb, even up until now. I still didn't want to believe my wife would do something to betray me. But now, having seen it with my own eyes, I could no longer deceive myself. In that moment, I almost couldn't resist rushing over. No. I told myself it wasn't the right time yet, I couldn't alert them. I stared intently at the two people clinging to each other. They howled for a long time before standing up. Only then did I see that the man had tattoos all over his right arm, exactly like the one I saw on Sha Honshu. The guy looked young, no more than in his early 20s. I found it unbelievable. My wife is almost 30, and she found herself a young stud. She stayed there for over an hour. When she left, the guy didn't follow. It seemed they weren't coming to our home tonight. I didn't rush to leave, sitting on the curb, my mind a mess. Thinking about what to do next, from dating to marriage, I thought our relationship was strong, but I couldn't tolerate this blatant infidelity. 
Divorce was a given. The tattoo guy had been to my house, knowing my wife was married, and he just brazenly showed up every night, using my things, sleeping with my wife. I couldn't let this go without a severe lesson. Lost in these chaotic thoughts, I didn't know how much time had passed, we actually decided to head back to the hotel. I saw another woman entering the tattooed guy's shop. She was dressed trendily, with a crop top and short shorts, red hair, and a lip piercing. Exuding a wild style completely different from my wife's cool, goddess-like demeanor. She sat on the sofa and kissed the tattooed guy. What was going on? Another one. This guy sure had some luck with women. Back at the hotel, I video called my wife. She complained about being exhausted from managing everything alone at home for the past half month while I was away. I almost lost my temper. She neither did housework nor cook. What could be so tiring? Was it tiring bringing a random guy home every day? Oh, by the way, my parents are coming over for the weekend. Could you get something nice for them when you come back? Distracted, I responded, oh, okay. I could already predict what my in-laws would say. They'd talk about my brother-in-law's job again. I had gone through a lot of trouble to find him to jobs after he graduated, but he quit Bolt after a few days. He either complained that a 3,500 yuan salary was too low, or that he didn't like working in a factory. But this kid only has an associate degree and knows nothing. Does he expect to find a high-paying office job right away? Ridiculous. My wife's family not only didn't blame him, but also accused me of finding unreliable jobs and cheating their family. I had wasted to favors and spent money and effort, but they still weren't satisfied. I was just a fool. Now I was completely disheartened. Why should I care about my in-laws or my brother-in-law? It had nothing to do with me. On Sha Honshu, I carefully studied the account of the guy with the foil tattoo. I confirmed he was the man my wife met at the motorcycle shop today. His profile had some motorcycle photos and some deliberately posed pretentious shots especially under those posts showing off his ABS and oblique muscles. Many female fans left infatuated emojis. As a man, I know exactly what he is thinking. Posting those photos is just to attract women. I changed my account gender to female, updated my profile picture to a pure-looking college girl, and changed my name to whose little cutie am I. Then I left a comment, You're so handsome, brother. I really want to touch those oblique muscles. I liked all his posts to make my presence felt. The next day, I returned home on time. The house was already spotless, with no trace of any outsider. The first thing my wife asked when she saw me was if I had bought gifts for her parents. Then she came over and started searching my suitcase. I couldn't help but think of her looking intoxicated in the arms of the tattooed guy yesterday, and I suddenly felt nauseous. Late at night, when she was asleep, I secretly checked her phone, but found the password had been changed. I opened Cha Honshu, and the tattooed guy had followed me back at some point. I sent him a private message, Honey, you're in Xi'an too. Can I add you on WeChat? The next day was Saturday, and my mother-in-law and father-in-law arrived early in the morning. As expected, within three minutes of entering the house, my mother-in-law couldn't wait to urge me to find another job for my brother-in-law. David studied electrical engineering, such a good major, finding a job should be easy. I rolled my eyes inwardly. If it's so easy, why don't you find one yourself? Seeing I didn't respond, my father-in-law seemed a bit displeased. Wong, you're an only child, with no siblings. By marrying my daughter, you gained a college-educated brother. For others, it might not be such a great deal. Gaining a brother, what a novel idea. Who would want that? But I said, yes. You're right, my father-in-law continued. So, if David has a successful career, you can support each other in the future. I remember your dad has a friend working at factory, he hasn't retired yet, right? Just ask your dad to arrange something for David, preferably an office job, with a permanent position. When I was job hunting, I was too embarrassed to ask my dad to use his connections, but here they were, casually asking us to arrange everything, not to mention my brother-in-law's qualifications didn't even meet the minimum requirements. I didn't immediately agree, my mother-in-law's face turned sour. We worrying about this every day. Can't eat or sleep. How can you be so heartless? It's your brother-in-law. What's the big deal in helping him out? A family should support each other. I looked at my wife, who also seemed displeased with me. Dad. Mom. It's not that I don't want to help. My dad and his friend haven't been in touch for years. It wouldn't be appropriate to ask suddenly. What's inappropriate? 
Relationships need to be maintained. Ask your dad to meet him a few times for dinner. The relationship will get closer. Listening to their entitled demands, I really wanted to shout. Do you know what disgusting things your daughter has done? Yet you still have the face to ask me for favors? Just then, I got a call from the delivery guy. I stood up. I'm going out to pick up a package. After picking it up, I really didn't want to face the family again. So I took the elevator to the 10th floor and then slowly walked up the stairs. Just as I reached the door, I heard my mother-in-law seemingly scolding my wife. Why are you still in touch with that guy? Aren't you afraid George will find out? I won't say. You won't say. How would he find out? You. 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 Oh. Just cut ties with that guy. Especially don't let your husband find out. We still need his help to get David a job. Don't cause any trouble. All right. All right. I know. Stop talking. He's coming back soon. Outside the door. I felt as if struck by lightning. So. My in-laws already knew my wife had someone else. In their minds, it's not wrong because of what their daughter did, but because they still needed my help for their son's job. I didn't know whether I was more shocked or angry. I wanted to yell and laugh at the same time. So, I was the fool being kept in the dark all along. Fine. Everyone's acting. Let's see who outacts whom. I pressed the elevator button behind me. The elevator door opened loudly, and the nose inside suddenly stopped. I pretended to have just come out of the elevator and opened the door to enter the house. My mother-in-law, seeing me return, was about to continue talking. I interrupted her. Dad. Mom. You're right. A family should help each other. I'll handle David's job. No matter how hard it is, I'll find a way. My in-laws were overjoyed. Praising me. That's the spirit. I knew our son-in-law would help. Who else would you help if not your own brother? Juan. Once it's done. I'll treat your family to dinner. They originally planned to stay for two days, but seeing their goal achieved, they happily left the same day. My wife's attitude towards me became more affectionate. The tattooed guy replied to my private message and gave me his WeChat ID. I immediately added him using a pre-prepared fake account. This WeChat ID had the same name as the Shah Honshu account, and he quickly accepted the friend request. I thought his Shah Honshu was already pretentious enough. But his WeChat moments were even more exaggerated. 9 out of 10 posts were showing off his physique can muscles, like a peacock displaying its feathers. I messaged him. Honey, how do you keep in shape? You're so big. He replied instantly. What's big? I don't understand. Your muscles. What did you think I meant? Oh, are you really a college student? Is your profile picture real? Yes, it's real. After seeing your photos, the bows at my school look like little chicks. So unimpressive. Ha ha. Mature men are great. You wouldn't understand yet. He flirted with me. And I half jokingly played along. We occasionally chatted on my fake account. He asked which university I attended. And I mentioned a third tier one. But whenever I asked about his job or workplace. He always avoided the topic. I felt there was something fishy. So I asked a friend to visit his motorcycle shop pretending to look at bikes. And my friend helped gather some information. It turned out the shop belonged to his uncle, and he was just helping out. My friend gave me the tattooed guy's phone number. Interestingly, the WeChat account linked to this number wasn't the one I added with my fake account. No wonder he didn't tell me the truth. So, he uses his main account to pretend to be decent, and the fake one for flirting. To add his main account, I created a new account. After adding him, I said I was the person who visited the shop earlier. The tattooed guy didn't suspect anything and politely told me to reach out if I needed anything. I casually fished for information. He was straightforward, saying he had a girlfriend introduced by his family, who worked as a teacher at a private kindergarten. I was shocked. I couldn't believe the girl with the lip piercing was a teacher. I said I had a cousin who wanted to be a teacher and asked if I could get some advice from his girlfriend. The tattooed guy said no problem and actually gave me a WeChat contact. The profile picture was of a chubby girl holding a dog. This didn't match the image of the girl with the lip piercing. I added her with my female account and pretended to ask for advice. She kindly responded to all my questions. It was clear she was a gentle and polite girl, checking her moments. I found some photos and confirmed she wasn't the girl with the lip piercing. All right. A kindergarten teacher girlfriend, the girl with the lip piercing, my married wife, plus all the girls he flirted with using his fake WeChat or Shah Honshu accounts. This guy is definitely a player, a scumbag who plays a lot but ends up badly. 
Whenever I had time, I'd wait outside the tattooed guy's shop. Finally, after a few days, I saw the girl with the lip piercing again. Before she entered the shop, I approached her. Miss, our team is looking for some models, and your look and vibe are just perfect. Can I get your contact information? She looked at me suspiciously, sizing me up. Really? I quickly said, I can show you our account. We have many followers on TikTok. I showed her our TikTok account. Nowadays, there are many pretty girls, but few with a unique style. You're very rare. If our team selects you, you'll get paid. Even if not, we won't charge you, so there's no risk of being scammed. We can add each other on WeChat or exchange phone numbers. If you find it bothersome later, just delete me. She was tempted. After thinking it over, she gave me her number. I politely excused myself, but she called me back. My boyfriend has a good look too. Do you need male models? I chuckled, not for now, but we might consider it later. Then I quickly left, since I promised to find my brother-in-law a good job. My in-laws called every day to check my progress. I kept delaying with various excuses. My wife treated me much better than before, but I grew colder towards her. Nitpicking over the smallest things, I used to be extremely tolerant, but now I was the complete opposite. She couldn't handle it, and we argued almost daily. After fights, I wouldn't console her like before. I'd come home late without telling her where I was. When she got really upset, I'd say, I've been busy running around for your honey's job, entertaining people. If you can't help, at least don't fight with me. What do you want? She was speechless, almost furious, and complained to her mom. Her mom scolded her for being inconsiderate. I don't care how you to fight. The most important thing now is your honey's job. Calm down. Understand. My wife was truly furious, nitpicking, cold wars. My wife endured my anger for days, seeing she was reaching her limit. I told her I had to go on another business trip. She had been holding back for a while, the day I left. She immediately arranged to meet the tattooed guy and booked a room. She even paid for it herself. She used my money for everything, but became generous for a young stud. Pathetic. I hired someone to follow them. Once they were in the room, I texted the girl with the lip piercing. I mimicked a sly tone. Sister, he's with me right now. She called immediately. I hung up and texted her again. Can't he take a break? Is he not satisfied with you? I just took a shower, and he's back again. Who the hell are you? I'll kill you. It seemed she was furious. I switched numbers and texted her. Your boyfriend is with someone else at XX Hotel, Route 802. Don't ask who I am. Hurry. Or you might miss catching them. She didn't disappoint me. Within 20 minutes, she arrived with a group of girls. Looking fierce, I hid in the emergency exit. Watching the girl with the lip piercing and her friends bang on the door of Rue 802, yelling and kicking, but no one opened the door. The nose drew the attention of all the guests on that floor. She stopped a passing cleaner, who was initially reluctant to open the door. She got angry and said her boyfriend was committing suicide inside. If delayed, the hotel would be responsible. Scared, the cleaner quickly used a master key to open the door. Smart move. Once the door opened, she and her friends rushed in. Immediately, I heard my wife's screams and the girl's furious cursing. Wearing a hat and mask, I blended into the crowd watching the drama. Her friends were aggressive, pulling my wife's hair and slapping her. They kept shouting, old woman, slut, pig, bitch, how dare you touch my friend's man. One girl slapped her dozens of times before grabbing a hotel slipper to continue the beating. My wife screamed in pain. She struggled but two girls held her down firmly. The tattooed guy tried to intervene but was pushed aside by the girl with the lip piercing. Don't move. I will beat her to death today. No one in the crowd stopped them. Instead, they all took out their phones to take pictures and videos. In a short time, my wife's face was swollen from the slaps. The girls weren't satisfied. Starting to strip her and drag her out, bitch. So slutty. Let everyone see. My wife, disheveled, clung to her remaining underwear, almost fainting from crying. When the hotel staff and security arrived, I quickly left. I didn't go far. Waiting outside the hotel, half an hour later, the girl with the lip piercing, her friends, and the tattooed guy finally came out. No matter how much she cursed him, the tattooed guy didn't say a word. The last to leave was my wife, beaten black and blue, stumbling as she walked. When my wife got home, I called her, but she didn't answer. I sent a message on WeChat but she ignored it. I sent another message. Honey, 
My business trip ended early. I'll be home soon. This time, she finally responded, Ah, I'm almost home. Are you at home now? She didn't reply again. Five minutes later, I saw her rush out of our community and get into a taxi. Then a WeChat message came. I'm at my mom's today. Okay, I'll pick you up after dinner. No need. I'll stay here tonight. I called my mother-in-law. As soon as she answered, she asked, Is there any progress with the job? I pretended to be in a difficult position. It's not going very well. Their unit is very tight on positions right now. We should be prepared for the possibility that it might not work out. My mother-in-law was anxious. What? What should we do then? Mom, don't worry. Actually, there's another way. What is it? Money. If we have enough money, things will be easier. My mother-in-law hesitated. In her mind, this was something I should handle. Especially since I didn't ask them for any money for the first two jobs I found for my brother-in-law. How much are we talking about? At least 300,000. What? 300,000. I persuaded her. This unit offers great benefits. Many people would fight to get in. Once he's in, he can earn it back in two to three years. You have to spend money to make money. My mother-in-law was very conflicted. But that's a lot of money. Let us think about it. Then I added. By the way, mom, when should I pick up Anna? What? What? She's not here. Didn't Anna say she was going to your place today? I came back from my trip. And she's not home. Oh, right, right. I forgot. She's here. Sleeping. Ask her yourself later. My mother-in-law quickly changed her story. I smiled and hung up the phone. The next day, I called my wife on video, but she hung up. Then she sent a message saying her face had an allergic reaction, and she couldn't go to work or see anyone for a few days. I quickly asked if she was okay and if she needed to go to the hospital. She said it was fine just needed some rest and that she would stay at her mom's for the next few days. She planned to recover at her mom's place. Given that her face was swollen like a pig's head, it would take at least a week or two to heal. Three days after the confrontation, the girl with the lip piercing posted on her moments, kicked out the scumbag, celebrating my return to single life. I messaged the tattooed guy with my fake account. Honey, why haven't you chatted with me these days? He replied, too busy, busy my ass. Dizzy dealing with the girl with the lip piercing. More likely, I found some provocative photos online and sent them to him. Honey, do you like my new outfit? Can't see the clothes. Only noticed your body drooling emoji. You're so naughty. Honey, school is so boring. I want to come to see you tomorrow. He perked up immediately and invited me to a hotel to watch TV. Watch TV. My ass. He just wanted to head straight to the point in the hotel. I suggested, I know a secluded park that's beautiful and quiet, let's go there instead. I added, honey, don't you think it's more exciting outside, and we don't have to spend money. The tattooed guy immediately agreed, can I ride your big motorcycle, honey? Of course, cutie, my bike is expensive, you've probably never ridden one like it. He flirted back without a hint of displeasure. Clearly, neither my wife nor the girl with the lip piercing meant anything significant to him. They were just tools to alleviate his boredom. That evening, I called my mother-in-law and asked how she was considering the money. She hinted that the 300000 was too much and asked if it could be less. Mom, a junior college graduate like David wants to get into a good unit. You have to invest some money. My mother-in-law fell silent. I pretended to think for a moment, then decisively said, All right, how about this? You prepare 15000 first, and I'll handle the rest, whether it's five, ten or 15,000. Consider it my contribution as his honey-in-law. David can pay me back whenever he has the money. How about that? Hearing that she only needed to prepare 15,000, my mother-in-law felt much less pressure and immediately agreed. I told her to act quickly as opportunities were limited. So, she transferred the money to me that day. 15,000, not a penny less, exactly the amount I had given them as a bride price. George, We've spent so much money. David's job should be secure, right? In theory, yes. But we shouldn't be overly confident about anything. What if it doesn't work out? Can we get the money back? Mom, what are you thinking? We've already spent money on meals, gifts, and other expenses. How could we get it back? But think positively. It should be fine. The next day, I arrived at the secluded park early. When the tattooed guy showed up on his motorcycle, I messaged him. Honey. Are you here yet? 
I've been waiting for a while. He called me on video, but I hung up and reply. We'll see each other soon. I'm wearing a short skirt, very easy to recognize. Hurry up. Since cars couldn't enter the park, the tattooed guy parked his motorcycle outside. Luckily, this was a wild park with no management, no surveillance, and few people. Once he walked away, I grabbed the tools I had brought, found his bike's alarm system, and disabled it. Then I started smashing. I smashed everything that could be smashed until the bike was a wreck. When the tattooed guy messaged me saying he couldn't find me, I was already gone. Then I blocked him. Thinking about how furious he would be when he saw his beloved bike turned into a heap of junk, I felt a rush of satisfaction. Then I drove straight to my mother-in-law's house. When my wife got home, her face was bruised and swollen, but she insisted it was just an allergy. In the middle of summer, she was wrapped up in lawn sleeves and tans, likely hiding more bruises on her body. She claimed she felt cold. I played dumb. My wife had stayed at her parents' house for over a week, and it was becoming unreasonable for her not to come home. When she finally returned, despite being very careful, I discovered she was still in contact with the tattooed guy. The tattooed guy was sweet-talking her on WeChat. He said he had long since broken up with the girl with the piercing, but she wouldn't give up and kept following him. He assured her that they were completely done this time, and that nothing like this would ever happen again. My wife, having forgotten the pain once the wound healed, chose to forgive him. Then the tattooed guy mentioned and that his motorcycle was broken and needed to be fixed before he could see her. My love-struck wife even transferred 5,000 yuan to him. Fine. 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 A whore and a dog. Together forever. Let's see if their love is truly unbreakable. After transferring me 15,000 yuan, my mother-in-law went from calling once a day to twice a day. She was terrified that something might go wrong. When I told her that my brother-in-law's jot was almost settled and that I just needed to privately give another 10 to 8,000 yuan to ensure everything, she almost jumped for Joe. I took the opportunity to suggest a celebratory dinner, inviting all the relatives. My mother-in-law agreed without hesitation. Sure. Those people always say David is just living off us. This time I'll show them how amazing my son is. In my mind, I despised her. What's so amazing about your son? Which of his jobs did he get on his own? But aloud, I echoed her sentiment. Yes, exactly. I reserved to tables at a restaurant near the bell tower. My wife's entire family, along with her aunts and uncles, filled the tables. During the dinner, everyone was full of envy. They talked about how successful her son was, how they would now enjoy life. They said my wife was lucky to have married such a capable man. My mother-in-law and father-in-law were grinning from ear to ear. My wife also seemed to be in a good mood. Recently, she and the tattooed guy had been incredibly sweet, already planning whether the next time I traveled, they would meet at a hotel or a house. My brother-in-law was engrossed in his games, not even thanking me once. Suddenly, I felt incredibly wronged by my past self. My father-in-law, drunk, patted my shoulder. George. When are you and Nana going to give me a big, fat grandson? My wife muttered. Why have kids? My mother-in-law nudged her. You're almost 30. If not now, when? I smiled without saying a word. The electronic screen in the hotel lobby was playing music, but suddenly switched to a video. Old woman, how dare you touch my friend's man? Please, stop fighting. Don't move. I'm going to kill her today. Everyone's attention was immediately drawn to the screen. There clear as day, was my wife, with disheveled clothes, being dragged and beaten by several women, while a shirtless man stood nearby. Bitch, so slutty. Let's strip her naked for everyone to see. No. No. Your boobs are so big. Come on, say something dirty for us to hear. My mother-in-law looked like she was about to faint from fright. My father-in-law's face turned dark. My wife stared dumbly at the screen, dropping her teacup which shattered on the floor. Everyone was stunned. In the midst of the silence, my brother-in-law spoke. Damn, sis, who were you shacking up with? My mother-in-law looked at me. What nonsense, this can't be your sister. Waiter, what are you showing on that screen? Turn it off. My brother-in-law tried to say more, but my father-in-law shot him a look that made him shut up. I looked at my wife, my expression calm. I need an explanation. My wife's face turned as red as a cup shrimp, she stared blankly, not knowing what to think. My mother-in-law, with a smile more hideous than a cry, said, George, this can't be Anna. Mom, there's no need to say more. 
I'm not so blind that I can't recognize my own wife. My father-in-law, thinking I was suppressing my anger, afraid that the situation might get out of hand, sternly yelled at my wife. Speak up. What the hell is going on? My wife, scared, started to cry. Why are you crying? Do you still have the nerve to cry? My father-in-law, with his violent temper, slapped her. I watched them coldly, thinking they knew about their daughter's affair all along. Why are they only disciplining her now? Why not earlier? Some relatives tried to mediate, saying not to push the child, that Anna had always been a good girl, and that there must be some misunderstanding. What kind of misunderstanding leads to being caught in bed? Seeing my goal achieved, I said no more and got up to leave. My mother-in-law tried to stop me, but I shook her off roughly. I spent the night in a hotel. My mother-in-law and father-in-law called me countless times and sent countless WeChat messages, but I ignored them all. The next morning, when I returned home, my mother-in-law and father-in-law were still there. Upon seeing me, they rushed over, relieved. George, we were so worried about you all night. My wife sat on the sofa, her eyes red and swollen from crying. My mother-in-law said, we gave her a good scolding last night, no matter what. It was Ana's fault, but what's done is done. We need to find a solution. Don't you think? I remained silent. My mother-in-law continued, if you need to vent, you can hit her, scold her, whatever you want. My wife protested, mom. I slowly started to speak, mom. Dad, ask yourselves honestly. Since I've been with Anna, how have I treated her? How have I treated you? How have I treated David? Haven't I done my utmost to handle everything? And what did I get in return? Betrayal and deceit. So tell me, how should I solve this? How should I face this? My father-in-law, filled with shame and anger, kicked my wife right in front of me. Shameless thing. How could you do this to George? My wife couldn't hold it in any longer and exploded. Yes, I did have someone outside. I did cheat. Didn't you already know? What's the point of pretending? You've scolded and hit me all night. Isn't it enough? Do you want me to die? Whatever. Let's just get divorced. My mother-in-law and father-in-law were so furious they nearly fainted. You foolish girl. What are you saying? We didn't know anything. My mother-in-law's face showed visible panic as she spoke, glancing at me for my reaction. After yelling, my wife stormed out. I went to the bedroom, ignoring my in-law's calls from outside. For several days, my wife didn't come back. Then, one day, she suddenly messaged me, saying she had scheduled our divorce and told me to prepare our assets for division. She claimed she was entitled to half. I had to admire her audacity. Although she was technically right, how could she have the nerve to claim my money as the guilty party? Luckily, my house and car were premarital assets, so she couldn't touch them. Since discovering her betrayal, I had already been preparing for this day. Quietly transferring my assets, I showed her my bank account with only a few thousand yuan left. If it came to dividing assets, she might end up owing me. After all, from our dating days to our marriage, I had paid for everything. You make 20 to 30 thousand a month. How could you have so little money? If you don't believe me, go check with the bank yourself. Speaking of money, shouldn't you return the dowry my family gave for the wedding? My wife immediately became displeased, looking exasperated. George, you actually want the dowry back? Are you even a man? I'm not a man, but the tattooed guy you're keeping is. And don't think I don't know that my mom gave you 15,000. That was for helping your brother find a job. I don't care. That money is already given to you. Consider it as the return dowry. After a few more days of arguing, my wife finally realized she wouldn't get any money and gave up. We went through the divorce proceedings behind her parents' backs. During the cooling off period, my Nax wife's parents kept trying to reconcile us every day. I voluntarily applied for a business trip to get away. My ex-mother-in-law, having no choice, shamelessly asked if I was still going to help with her son's job. I told her that if she wanted to continue, she would need to spend more money, but I wouldn't be handling it personally. They got anxious, but we already spent 15000 if you don't help us, give the money back. I calmly reply, your daughter said that 15,000 counts is the return dowry. Looks like I'm the one losing here. What dowry money? We don't recognize that. If you don't give the money back, we'll sue you. Ha. Huh. Their true colors finally show. When they needed me, they appealed to emotions. Seeing no hope, they immediately turned hostile, only caring about the money. Do as you wish. Go ahead and sue with that.
I hung up the phone and blocked the whole family. My ex-wife initially moved back to her parents' house, but her parents and brother constantly blamed her for losing 15000 and her brother's job because of her cheating, saying the family's reputation was ruined among the relatives. Their house was a daily battlefield. Good news travels slowly, bad news quickly. The neighbors, eager for drama, pointed fingers every day, unable to bear it. My ex-wife rented an apartment, declaring she was cutting ties with her family, causing another uproar from her parents. On the day the divorce was finalized, my ex-wife said she had things to pick up from our home and added me on WeChat. I saw her latest posts. Without exception, they were about discarding trash, embracing a new life, and becoming a better version of herself. That afternoon, she posted another update. She was dining with someone it was the tattooed guy. The caption read, Thank you for being here. What was even more infuriating was that this restaurant was the same one where we celebrated our marriage registration. Trying to provoke me. Huh? An eye for an eye. Let me give you some excitement too. Hadn't I added the kindergarten teacher on my alternate account? I messaged her. Sis, is your beau friend with you? No, he's at work. Why? Well, please don't be mad. I think I saw someone who looks like your beau friend having a meal with another woman. They seemed very close, I felt uneasy and didn't want you to be deceived. I sent her the picture from my ex-wife's WeChat moments. It took a while for her to reply. Where is this? I told her the location. Meanwhile, I immediately drove to the restaurant. When I arrived, I walked in confidently and quickly found my ex-wife and the tattooed guy. I sat down directly across from them. My ex-wife saw me and was surprised. Then a look of realization crossed her face, and she seemed a bit smug cozying up to the tattooed guy even more. They had nearly finished their meal but ordered two more dishes. My ex-wife probably thought I was here because I was unwilling to let go, and she wanted to flaunt her relationship in front of me. I pretended to look at the menu while keeping an eye on the door. Thankfully, it didn't take long for the kindergarten teacher to arrive, when she saw her boyfriend feeding another woman while hugging her. The kindergarten teacher grabbed a drink from the table and threw it in the tattooed guy's face without a word. My ex-wife, who was snuggled up with the tattooed guy, also got splashed. She instantly got angry. Who are you? Are you blind? Why are you throwing things at us? The kindergarten teacher sneered and slapped the tattooed guy across the face. The tattooed guy took the slap without saying anything. My ex-wife shouted, Are you crazy? She raised her hand to slap the kindergarten teacher. Unexpectedly, the tattooed guy pushed her away so hard she nearly fell. Don't touch my girlfriend. My ex-wife was stunned, but he didn't care about her and was busy explaining to his girlfriend. No, no, she's just a friend. We were just having a meal, don't get the wrong idea. I have eyes, I can see for myself, since you have someone you like. Let's break up, I won't cling to you. With that, the kindergarten teacher turned and left. The tattooed guy immediately wanted to chase after her. My ex-wife grabbed him and wouldn't let him go. Who is she? You're not leaving until you explain. I told you, she's my girlfriend. My ex-wife's eyes widen in disbelief. She's your girlfriend. Then what am I? Seeing his girlfriend leaving through the door, the tattooed guy shook off my ex-wife roughly and shouted, you're a divorced woman nearing 30. Stop pretending to be pure. We were just having fun. Did you really think you were something to me? With that, the tattooed guy ran after his girlfriend. Leaving my ex-wife utterly shocked, I was sitting in the best spot to watch everything unfold, thoroughly enjoying the free show, feeling elated. Who can understand this? My ex-wife, who thought she could openly be with her lover and even flaunt their relationship in front of me, turned out to be nothing more than a casual fling to him. Not even a proper mistress, just a pastime. My ex-wife then noticed I was there too and became furious. She stood up awkwardly and left. On the way home, I checked my WeChat moments and her post about the dinner was gone. The next day, I asked her when she planned to come and get her things, only to find I had been blocked. I'm not saying who broke down first. Using my alternate account, I messaged the kindergarten teacher to see what her plans were. She told me that her boyfriend insisted he was just having a meal with a friend and didn't do anything inappropriate, and he was very apologetic. She was very conflicted. No way, sister. There's so much you don't know yet this pit. If you jump in, you'll regret it sooner or later. That day, I sent her a USB drive containing the video of the tattooed guy and my ex-wife being caught in the hotel. I another woman. 
It's also included the flirtatious chat records between him and my fake account, with my avatar censored, of course. The most shocking part was a carefully edited medical report. It had the tattooed guy's name on it, confirming he had an STD. A few days later, the kindergarten teacher told me she had broken up with her boyfriend. I smiled. That's how it should be. I packed up the belongings my ex-wife had left in my house and sent them to her parents. We never saw each other again. The next I heard of her was a month later. It turned out my ex-wife and the tattooed guy's story had a sequel. The kindergarten teacher and the tattooed guy broke up amicably, but her brothers couldn't let it go. They beat the tattooed guy half to death and even went to my ex-wife's workplace, publicly calling her a shameless whore. Although my ex-wife knew she was in the wrong, she had always maintained a cold goddess image at work and couldn't bear being called a prostitute. She got into a huge argument with them. As a result, the kindergarten teacher's brother scattered dozens of STD diagnosis reports all over the office. They said, if she wasn't sick, how did the scumbag get infected? My ex-wife, both furious and shocked, couldn't defend herself under the strange looks from her colleagues and went straight to get tested without even asking for leave. The result was obvious. My ex-wife lost face at her workplace and resigned voluntarily. No one knew that it was I who informed the kindergarten teacher's brothers about this and told them the address of the mistress's workplace. Don't say I was cruel, it was just the revenge of an honest man.